October 31, 2024. This is the S&P 500 E-Futures Mini on a 2000 tick chart using NinjaTrader 8. This is what the chart looked like today. There was kind of this very gradual sell-off and then it entered this, pretty, this choppy range, but the range, it was hard for me to identify immediately. But I ended up with these smaller sub ranges and I was trading a lot of these short and trend channels. It was probably toward the end that I found the consistency of the a range highs and then the range lows it wasn't really quite consistent because it looked like it was finding support here and they edged down a little bit edged down a little bit edged down a little bit and maybe about right here we're only really confirmed two maybe three times that you found the total range there was a lot of volume today and there was quite a few setups not all of them were the best but they were i guess almost setups that i marked and i took a total of two trades the first one was profitable and the second one really wasn't in hindsight, that good a trade. I think I got lured in by the signal bar and it caused a losing trade. So there was economic data that came out at 530 Pacific Standard, which is about right here. Now, it really didn't do that much. It was the core PCI, excuse me, core PCE, unemployment and employment cost index. So it didn't really do that much, but I think this increased volume is because it's the end of the month. It's the last day of October, also Halloween. So I think there was a lot of people rolling over contracts, um, a lot of institutions buying and selling and hedging their positions because the election is next week, as well as they're needing to turn in their, I think, October statements. So maybe they're just kind of repositioning to make selling losers, you know, or selling winners. I don't know. There's just, I think there's just a lot more volume than usual today. That didn't really translate to necessarily easier trading. Because I found a few areas where this was kind of tricky for me. So I'm going to get into the trades right now. I'll try to go through it quickly because there's quite a few things that I marked. So the pre-market, there was a gap down. It was chopping and then it moved down on this green down channel. Hit this consolidation area and then reversed back up. There was quite a lot of candles even in the pre-market. So I already knew before the market opened that it was going to be probably a busy day. Now, busy doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy trading day. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to offer uh, a lot of opportunities either. So it opens, it breaks below the pre-market low, which is I have here. And it immediately sets up what I think, well, not immediately, but it sets up what I think is a higher low setup. But I called it an almost trade. So this is move the screen down channel, push up, down, and it breaks on this red up channel. So this red up channel, I found it a really short and trend channel. It broke, tested once, then it made a new high. So then it's coming back down and it creates this higher low. I call this higher low an almost trade because it does confirm a failed second entry short, first entry short, second entry short. There's a failed second entry short right here. And you have a higher low here. I didn't like this higher low because the signal bar was too neutral for me. EMA is starting to hold support, but it's a little early to trust it all that much because it didn't have, um, a good support previously. So this is the first time it'd be acting as support. And I was wondering, could this be a breakout pullback of this potential bigger range? So I had the pre-market high here, technically the highest here in the pre-market, but it looked like I had most confirmations here and good confirmations here. Technically the pre-market lows is dotted the red line. So I was thinking there's a fail breakout, could be a fail breakout pullback. So that gave me pause. So I called it an almost trade, no real setup that I like. It ends up working moves up in this orange up channel also this orange up channel i didn't think you know it had two touches and this is potential third touch but everything just wasn't looking super convincing to me because it already had a break of this red test of the high right here and so this big green guy still needs to test this low so it only made really one attempt this could be the start of a second attempt so no trade there or almost trade and then it creates this second setup uh, again, another almost trade. So I find that I find that prices are probably pushing up on this orange up channel. It's a break, first attempt up, push back. It could be starting a second attempt up. So it's a first entry long, pull back. Here creates a second entry long. So it creates a second entry long confirmed. Also on the second entry long, two legs down, it has failed. It also created a new low, first entry short. And on the same candle, it when it ticked up, confirmed the second entry long and came back down and caused a failed second entry long. 
It also created your second entry short. So you're, at this point, I'm thinking, well, there's nothing. I mean, there, it seems like there's a lot of things going for it to go short. The problem is, it looks like it's running into this potential support area because this line, I mean, granted it broke through by one tick here and one tick here, it had trouble, one attempt, two attempt, three attempt. Bias is going down. So you're thinking, okay, bias is going down, I should go short, but I can't deny the fact that there has been some kind of support here. So it's just hard to trust. EMA is not giving me any really good, reliable information because it's just, this is very flat right here. So I can't really trust the EMA acting as, you know, another key entry point, like, oh, well, close below the EMA, so that's a good indication. Well, hard to say that because the EMA is so flat, even though it closed below, the next candle could easily just move right back above. So I decided to skip it. In this case, it did flush down. It moves down on this orange down channel, really nice, but unfortunately, I'm not on this trade, so I couldn't really jump on it, and there was no other entry that I could find. This is consolidation area. You do have a new high, first entry long. Technically, you have a second entry long here. It's doji. I don't really like that. You do have a higher low here. The higher low I'm, I don't like because it's at the at this point, I'm just thinking range. So, and I'm running into EMA. EMA, again, wasn't reliable, but it is showing a bias of going down. So it's like it could be a fail breakout. So even though it's a first entry long, second entry long, potential higher low, I'm also playing range rules. So the first entry, second entry doesn't quite matter, but I am potentially buying at the high of the range because this range could actually be up here or with a lot of things that i treat with ranges when it's this tight trading i don't really uh, put too much reliability on this exact value i see it more as a potential one to two tick zone that the range could be falling in especially when it's a little ambiguous because if you drew it here this is also valid range then you can also bring it up a little bit more. This is also a valid range, the top of the range. So just knowing that I'm clearly at the top of the range makes me weary of buying, especially when it's just right at the EMA, it did break a little bit above. Price to move up. So I was playing with this, a different channel at the time. It looked like it fit pretty well here, here, and here. And mainly I had this channel superimposed with this orange, this yellow one was because I like the confirmations down here and the confirmations look like they kind of fit up here. But later, I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now, but later, we'll actually just go ahead and zoom out and I'll explain why I deleted it later. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Put that back. This is the guy I was also playing with at the time. I had an overshoot here, then it did confirm nicely here. And then it had an overshoot here. The problem with this Channel that I drew is I was getting decent confirmations at the top, except for this overshoot here. And I was really just trying to make the bottom side match. But after this confirmation, there was no other bars down here. So it was clearly bullish bias. So I had found this other yellow down channel that looked like it fit pretty well. That's when I just kind of abandoned the idea of taking any um, chance on this channel. So that's how come it just kind of disappeared. And then I was working with the yellow down channel. So it kind of moves, bounces, breaks out of this green up channel, makes one attempt up, pull back, creates this second entry long here. This actually sets up for my one trade. Well, actually one of two trades. So it's a new low, first inch short, second inch short, technically a third entry short, overshoot here. It made one attempt up to test the high, but it did come from an overshoot. So I'm not super sure it's going to come back and test the highs. They create a first entry long pullback, creates a second entry long right here. So I'm watching this carefully. I'm noticing the EMA is again starting to act as potential resistance because it had a violation here. And when this one opened and pushed up, I liked, you know, it was really printing kind of not the fastest, but it did give me enough time to think, okay, I think there's enough room the scalp out. It's a decent signal bar, which is this one. Didn't touch, but close enough as a good rejection. This is only a six tick bar. So I decided to take the risk, entered one tick below, got filled. And then when the next bar flushed down, gave me my profit target. I moved my stop from up here because it's actually it's above this, this double bar here, one point below break even. And then I got stopped out.
So this is granted a little bit more aggressive. It's a tiny signal bar, but I felt the risk was, you know, manageable because it's only six ticks. Even though I kept it, I think two ticks above. So it's actually one tick here and then one more tick here. So it's still within my risk tolerance of eight ticks. And I thought it was like a decent setup. Not the best, but good enough for a quick scalp. Plus, I also took into consideration would I get a bounce off of this low? And I knew my one point profit target was going to get out before here. And unfortunately, it didn't run. I mean, it did run, but it came back and stopped me out break even. If I was a little more patient and moved it after this one formed, I might have been able to chase it down to roughly here, but I'm okay because other times it would have just reversed and potentially stopped out my uh, runner, which would have given back some of the profit instead of adding, instead of having a free trade. The prices moved down. I thought it was kind of following this green down channel, but it didn't really fit nicely. I mean, it fit, but it didn't really yield too many setups. It kind of gets choppy here. Hits this low here, creates a first entry short right here, and a second entry short. Decent signal bar to go short on, but it's a little far from the EMA. I'm not that hot on the idea because I was also thinking, okay, it could be something like this. Maybe there's a short here. I just didn't really mark it, didn't really think too much of it. Hits this consolidation area and it creates this failed second entry long. Again, what I call an almost trade. So you clearly have a double top. So it's a new high here. First entry long pullback. Second entry long. Second entry long failure. It's a clear second entry long failure. Break of this green up channel. Look like it made two attempts up. One attempt, two attempt, and then fail. The thing is, I didn't like the signal bar is too neutral. I needed to close lower. Even though it did engulf this bar, I don't like how bulls buyers were able to run it right back up to here. And it, this body actually closes higher than the halfway point. So that gives me caution. And this signal bar never closed below the localized low. So obviously there could be some kind of resistance here. That gives me a little concern that it also could be moving back into this tiny trading range that I have drawn. So it's an almost trade, a little ambiguous. Bias is going down, but it just wasn't a firm setup for me. Then prices move. Looks like it moves down on this orange down channel. Break, test the low, pushes back up. It is a new low here, low of the day. First inch of short, pull back on the same candle. I mean, not same candle. It's a first inch of short. Then it creates a second entry short. Pick up, tick back down. I thought this is, unfortunately, I mean, actually, I take that back. I think this was a possible trade. And I know why I thought it was a possible trade because the EMA. It's close enough of a touch that you could say it's a rejection. Signal bar is about 10 ticks, so it's manageable risk. It did engulf this previous bar and it closed at the low, not the, that didn't close at the low, but pretty close to the low, that it might've been worth considering a quick sell. I mean, I will admit that it is coming right off the lows already, uh, low of the day, but the overall bias has been very, very bearish. And it looked like it touched the highs, touched the lows, touched, pretty much touched the highs. Lows, almost made it, back to lows, back to the highs, almost made it, but then it failed and it's coming back down. So I thought maybe there's a possible trade there. <clears throat> then prices move and it creates this new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long, second entry long failure. So second entry long failure, it's a good signal bar with strong close with an EMA rejection. But now I'm selling into the low of this possible down channel, this uh, orange down channel that I drew. So if you didn't enter here, I'm a little weary of entering here because I was thinking, okay, it's kind of falling into this spike and then it's channel down. So yes, you know, it could follow through with these smaller consolidations, but I still had in mind that there's an opportunity here. And if you missed it, I don't know if I would really want to chase it here because it is the low of day here. So thought it was more of a, um, excuse me, an almost trade. The prices continue moving down. You know, it looked like it worked out pretty well, clearly on a bearish day, which is good. I just wasn't too, if this had pushed up to touch here, then I think there would have been no hesitation taking this trade because clearly it moved up back down. But here it looks like bears are losing, bulls are losing power and it's coming back down. But then bears, I mean, Look at the previous price action. There's all these decisive sell-offs, but now this sell-off is 
granted more shallow. So it looks like the bears are losing momentum. Sellers losing momentum. And price has moved down, hits this consolidation area. It's creating new low of days. Breaks down, so it's hard for me to find a good setup here. And it actually creates this lower high here. <clears throat> so it's a new low. It's a first entry short pullback, second entry short, but it's also a break of the screen up channel. So it's break, test the new high. At one point, I was thinking, well, actually, through it here, I was thinking this is a trading range, but I extended it out to here and actually bumped it up by one tick. And I was thinking, could there be some kind of resistance here? I'm not really sure and buying into the idea of a trading range with the low here. But clearly, there's some kind of resistance here. It's coming back down. The follow through candle is pretty decent. So I was thinking this is actually a possible trade, but you can't take it on this one. I'd have to wait after this close. I'd have to wait to see the close on this guy. So I would have waited for this one to close and then take the trade. But I didn't take the trade, unfortunately. But it did close really well low and it pushed down. So there's a possible trade here. Bounces and then it creates a higher low. This higher low, unfortunately, is an almost trade. It's a break of this purple down channel. That's the low, and now it's reversing, potentially moving up on this orange up channel. The problem is, I'm thinking that I'm in a trading range with the top of the range here, so I'm buying right into resistance. It's a good signal bar, strong push. Unfortunately, with this previous price action, it's just telling me, okay, this is risky, don't take this trade. Looks like it would have worked though. And so I thought it was a fail breakout. This blue line doesn't exist right now. Pushes down and it creates a new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long, potential second entry long failure. It's confirmed second entry long failure here now. And I thought this was actually an almost, uh, no, I take it back. I think I have it in my notes as a possible trade because I'm coming potentially from the top of the range, which is this range I'm working with. Fail breakout, fail to break through, Close is strong, good signal bar. Follow through is good. I think this was a, uh, it's, you know, this follow through candle didn't break above the EMA, but the EMA is granted kind of flattening. So what's more important is it couldn't break through the top of the trading range. So I thought that was a decent setup. You had to sit through this noise depending on where you entered. And so then it breaks out of this. I thought that was kind of a green channel down here. It kind of fit for a little while, then it broke out, tested low, and I found maybe this transparent gray channel because I had one touch, two touch, three touch. It fit somewhat well down here, but no clean setups. Yes, it makes a new low. So I'm thinking this is a possible trading range here to here. It had fail breakout, first entry short. You technically had a second entry short here, but there's no clean setup. When it bounces here, that's when I drew this orange up channel because I saw this green up channel break, tested the high, but it didn't correct. It just kind of hovered. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's actually moving in on this orange up channel. As a fail breakout of this previous trading range, but it keeps going. So it keeps going and pushes up, makes a new high. And if it reverses, so it breaks. I'm wondering if it's going to test the high of this orange up channel, or is this a fail breakout? It's going to run all the way back down to the low of this range. So it pushes down on the screen channel, breaks. So I'm testing, seeing if it's going to actually come back down here and also test the low of this green down channel. Makes one attempt down, makes a second attempt down right here. But this isn't a very good signal bar. It's like a first entry short, second entry short, bad signal bar, too much wick. Also a new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long, second entry long failure. So if it's a second entry long failure, you're thinking maybe I'm going to go short, but the second entry short isn't that convincing and it's above the EMA, potentially moving back into range, potentially, but it could also be trying to still test the high of this orange. So it's just a lot of things that are confusing. It's like a one attempt up, pullback. This could be a second attempt up to test the highs, even though you know it is a second entry short, but this isn't a very convincing follow through. So it's just... Too many ambiguities. I didn't mark it. It's just a little confusing. Push this down. Here's a fail breakout. So at this point, even though I had this blue trading range, I was seeing potentially this is some kind of resistance here. So it could be that maybe the bottom of the trading range is here with a high here. Bottom of the trading range, I didn't really think was down here because there's not as many confirmations. 
And this sits up for my second trade. And actually this second trade is a poor trade. I took it and I ended up losing. <clears throat> so it's a new low, it's a first entry short, second entry short. I reset the count here. It pushes up, I have a first entry short pullback. It creates this really strong, massive second entry short. It's a bad signal bar, but then the follow through is so strong. And I thought, okay, the way I read it is, if I'm trading this trading range, it's a fail breakout, move back into range. Fail breakout, move back into range. This one is actually higher than this one. This fail breakout is actually lower than this. So I'm expecting another move back into range. If I was playing this higher one, which at the time was, I think, a little lower here, it's you know maybe one touch, two touch, fail breakout, and potentially kind of like a, not the cleanest, but triple test. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going to move this back up to here. This strong follow through trigger bar, I like it. So I actually entered one tick below. I failed to consider the possibility that it could be a third touch confirmation of this trend line support and you know maybe a, a bigger range here. So I don't have this channel drawn yet because I should have had this as a potential trading trend line. And I didn't see that at the time. So I was actually selling into potentially resistance. And as a result, I'm sitting through this and then I get flushed and taken out here because I kept my stop one tick above here. And I'm, to compensate for this risk, because I'm here, I was gonna go for a two point scalp. So I was actually down here thinking there's plenty of room for this to run down into here, push down into the trading range, get a two point scalp to compensate for this. I think it's like a three point, let's see, 6675. Well, it's actually a four, four point risk. So I actually lost four points. I thought I lost like three and a quarter less, uh, three and a half, but I actually lost, took a pretty big loss. And it was a little unfortunate because then I was thinking, why would it push back up to here? It looks like it's already at the highs. But, you know, in context, I didn't also consider like this is a lot of congestion. This is the hammer bar. You had a doji here, a doji. So in quick succession, at least, not quick succession because this took a while to print, but at least in bar terms, the last three bars, no, out of the last six bars, three of them were like hammers and dojis, just very tight. I should have stayed away and I should have maybe considered or had this trend line drawn to think like, hey, there's a possibility I'm gonna be selling into support. So I got trapped here and took a loss. This is unfortunate. Then prices push up. <clears throat> then it breaks out of this high. It creates a new low. Well, not localized new low. I said first entry short, pull back, potential second entry short. Second entry short I saw as uh, almost trade because now I'm thinking this low end of the trading range isn't as valid as this high end. So I'm actually treating this high, this line here, and this one down here as the trading range. I saw as a fail breakout, creating a lower high, first entry short, second entry short. Decent signal bar, oh, bad signal bar, decent follow-up trigger bar, because I like that it moved one tick above and flushed really strongly. The thing I didn't really like is, even though the EMA is unreliable, it is starting to show a bullish bias. So it closed at the right at the EMA. And, excuse me, even though it's not reliable, it is a break of this orange up channel. So it's a push up and it it's just a little ambiguous. It, I was thinking it might be moving back into range, so maybe there's a short. I just, um, I think I was not trusting my read because the day has been a little choppy, especially after this loss here. So I left it alone and it looked like it would have worked. It moves down on this green down channel, breaks, tests the lows, starts pushing down. It looks like it fits pretty well on this orange down channel. You have a new low, first entry short. Technically, you have a second entry short. This is an inside bar. It's just not very clean, not very, uh, not very good, clear indication. You do have a break of this orange down channel. You're expecting a test of the low, but this isn't a good signal bar to get a trade ready. Stops around, tests and makes a new low again, and it pushes up and it creates another almost trade. So I'm seeing one, two, three, triple test, potentially a trading range. So in real time, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this push down, break and test the low. And now it's making two attempts up 
two attempts up. You do have a new low, first entry short, potential second entry short. The second entry short was actually, I wasn't really thinking second entry short till this formed. It actually opened here, flushed down. Now, it spent a little bit of time down here, and I was thinking, is this a potential second entry short? Signal bar is terrible, though. And I found the triple test, but then when it finally closed, it was above the halfway point, above the EMA, and it just very, wasn't a very clean setup. So I marked it, but it's really not not much of anything. So I called it an almost trade. The prices move. Even though I thought it was in trading range, it looks like it was starting to move up on this channel here. Break, first attempt long. Technically, it almost made a second attempt long, but this is an inside bar. Then you do have a first entry long, second entry long, break of this orange, test of the low. But the second entry long, this isn't a very good signal bar because it's inside to this one. So I wasn't really thinking long at this point. It could have been a fail breakout. Well, actually, in this, at, in real time, this is a fail breakout, but it's just no no clean setup here. As you can see, it gets really choppy and whippy. And it starts moving up on the second kind of shallow up channel. There's no clean setup here as well. Technically, you have a new high here, first entry long, pull back. You kind of have a setup for second entry long here, but it made a double high. So I'm not really thinking of going long just yet because I'm not 100% sure of what I'm seeing. Then when this one confirms the second entry long, so it's first entry long, pull back, second entry long, you're too close to the top of this support region of a possible trading range. Then it kind of moves up. You do have a new high first entry long break of this up channel, but there's no clean setup here because you have a second entry long here by technical count, but it's a bad signal bar, bad context. You have a higher low here, or yeah, higher low, but it's just too far now. And it's running into my previously established potential resistance of this larger trading range. So actually this trading range, it looks like it's confirming relatively well at the highs. This blue line doesn't exist yet, but it doesn't matter because you're so far away from it. You're just looking for shorts at this point. You have first entry long, you have a second entry long, bad signal bar, and inside bar flushes down, moves down on this clear channel, but it's it's really jumbled here. Nothing I particularly like. Pushes up. And this is getting towards the last, I'm just gonna zoom out real quick. This is getting towards the last uh, 15 minutes of the day where things are just moving rapidly. This is a lot of candles printed in 15 minutes. On a one minute chart, you're only gonna get like this many candles, but on a tick chart, you get so much price action. But that doesn't mean uh, it's worth taking because I do realize it's the end of the day, end of the month, people are just readjusting and it's just, it's easy to get chopped up to pieces. And there was, uh, especially in the last 10 minutes starting here, I'm extra weary because things could get rapid and get uh, volatile. So I, when I did look at it, I saw, okay, there's a break on the new low and hits another consolidation. I was considering if this this was kind of during regular trading hours. This is two legs up. Unfortunately, there's a bad signal bar here, but this is a good follow through. But then I didn't like the follow through closing so high. So maybe there's a fail breakout potential, you know, short here. There's one attempt up, pull back, second attempt up, but it didn't form during the regular trading hours, just wasn't clean. It looked like it would have worked. Would have been safer if, you know, you're waiting to see if there's a higher low here or, yeah, higher low here. Uh, lower high, excuse me, lower high here to see another flush down. But this is not that uh, pertinent because it was just kind of going toward the end of the day. That's kind of how I saw the charts today. It was, took a lot of focus. Uh, I know I got trapped on the second trade. The first trade was so-so. Actually, the first trade was okay. Let's go back and look at it real quick. I figured it was a small risk, worth, worth a shot, and it turned out all right. I was going with the trend, so that was good. And then the second trade, just I got trapped, got drawn in by the signal bar. The pre-market high and pre-market low actually didn't really matter, so I'm going to just remove it for myself, for my own notes. And it's kind of how I saw the trades today. Sell-off, trading range, copy, a lot of volume, just a little confusing at times. So hopefully that was helpful.